Uh, I'm Mark, and uh, I'll be talking about IQ Engine. I wanted to first thank all contributors of the open source project, uh, as well as anyone who's contributed recordings, as well as the coherent folks. So IQ Engine is an open source project that aligns really nicely with GNU Radio and SIGMF, as you'll see. It started about a year ago. I actually presented a prototype of it at last GRCon as part of a lightning talk. And quite a lot of work has been done over the last year. So I'll be showing a bunch of uh, features, demoing the current state of the tool, and then uh, talking about the next steps. Um, so to jump right in here, what is it? Well, it's um, a web-based tool designed around RF recordings. So that includes management, analyzing, uh, pro light processing, as well as sharing RF recordings all in your browser. Uh, now I'm gonna try to do a live demo even though I recorded one just for fun. So IQ Engine is available, like it's, it's public at iqengine.org. Um, the landing page has a little bit of uh, information about the tool, but the main you know, first page is here. So these first three tiles represent repositories of RF recordings available online. GNU Radio hosts a bunch of example SIGMF recordings. There's also some from Daniel Estevez and Northeastern. Uh, but you can also open your own local recordings uh, using this tool or a local directory of recordings. And currently they have to be in the SIGMF format, uh, which is not a tough uh, format to adopt. If you want to learn more about SIGMF, there's uh, kind of an introduction here. And we're also hosting a SIGMF workshop I believe it's tomorrow, uh, if you want to learn more. And if you have your own uh, cloud storage, you can connect to it directly. But I'm going to dive into the GNU Radio examples. So within each repository, you have the list of recordings available, you know, with any, any folders used to categorize. Spectrogram thumbnails, I'll zoom in here so it's easier to read. And the core SIGMF information, like data type, center frequency, sample rate, the number of annotations, you can actually click on that to show the list of annotations and a, uh, a breakdown of each one. So this is pretty useful if you're doing RFML work. Going into one of these recordings, we view the spectrogram page. So this shows, as you can imagine, uh, kind of a zoomed in spectrogram at the beginning of the recording. But then on the right, we have the minimap inspired by VS Code, which represents the entire recording. So you can jump to a different part. And what it does is download the IQ samples you're looking at only uh, to the client. And then all the FFTs and such are done client side. That's how we can also open local recordings all client side. Uh, now, you can see the uh, SIGMF annotations show up as bounding boxes, which are editable. Um, and you can enable time cursors, frequency cursors. The frequency cursors let you do baseband and RF units based on the center frequency the recording was taken at. Uh, time, frequency, and IQ plots. Close Discord so it keeps... Uh, Currently, the time, frequency, and IQ plots show whatever portion of the recording you have displayed on the spectrogram tab. On the spectrogram tab, we have adjustable color maps. And uh, you can adjust the dynamic range of how the magnitudes are mapped to the color map if you have like low SNR signals. Um, there is an FIR filter that runs before the FFTs are taken. So we have some example filter taps, like being able to filter out everything but the center half. And once again, this is all client side processing, uh, or you could just type in your filter taps, either real or complex. Let me go back to no filter. Adjustable window, FFT size. And then one experimental feature over here is this Python snippet. This is a portion of Python code that runs in the browser using an open source project called Pyodide. And the idea is whatever X is at the end of this snippet is what the um, this what, what will be displayed. 
So right now it might be hard to read, but it says x equals x times one. So it's not doing anything, but if I square it, and then actually it takes um, a few seconds for Pyodide to initialize at first. But once it's initialized, it's, it's like uh, maybe five times slower than native Python, which isn't bad, honestly, for the browser. I've been pretty happy with it. So let me do X times 10. And you can see the magnitudes are higher. I'll try X squared. So if it was a single carrier signal, you could use that to find the, um, the, the offset frequency, for example. Just a quick way to dabble around in Python. You have NumPy, SciPy, and, and basic Python available to you. Um, at the bottom, we have the, the global SIGMF information as well as a list of the annotations. You can jump to a specific annotation by clicking this button and it'll, it'll jump to whatever portion of the recording had that annotation and fetch the samples. Uh, zooming in, or zooming out rather, is currently done by doing batch decimation. Um, so it, it obviously needs to download way more when you zoom out, but we have a system where it only downloads you know, a fraction of the FFTs. Of course, the Wi-Fi here is pretty slow. So far, it's been able to keep up surprisingly well. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's why I saved it for last. Um, okay, so now that you saw kind of the basics of the tool, I'll run through a little bit more about the tool. So for the sake of context, what I showed you was the public instance of the tool at iqengine.org. Uh, you can open local files with it, so there's really no reason to like clone and run it yourself in most cases. Uh, unless you were, for example, wanting to run it uh, privately within your organization and share recordings you know, within the org. Or if you have really sensitive data and you can't just take my word for it that the data is kept client side, you could run your own instance um, through, through the, the Docker images that we build. If you're a developer of the tool, you'll want to actually run it from source. And that's really the only instance I'd say where it's worth running from source. I think a lot of us are used to finding a new SDR oriented project and cloning it and figuring out how to install it. Well, in this case, there's no need. So IQ Engine's built on top of SIGMF, like I mentioned. SIGMF, uh, we'll, we'll go over it more at the workshop, but it's, it's an open standard for saving RF recordings to disk. And that's in contrast to sending RF, digit, digitized RF over, over the wire, like with Vita 49. So IQ Engine involves having a binary IQ file and a JSON file. And at a minimum, you're gonna wanna store the sample rate, center frequency, data type. That way you can avoid bit rot and you can have compatibility with tooling like any radio and IQ Engine that supports SIGMF. Uh, like I mentioned, there's that link on IQ Engine and then we have the workshop. So the target users of IQ Engine are pretty similar to that of GNU Radio where both like individuals and organizations could get value from it. Um, and we're trying to keep it very educational, education oriented, as you saw with some of the features. Uh, it could be used for research oriented work or alongside production systems. So if you're a spectrum sensing group, you're making a lot of recordings, you could use IQ Engine to manage those recordings, query them, display them, even run processing on them. Now, one of the newer features of IQ Engine is the plugins. So everything I showed you so far represented client-side processing done in your browser on your computer. But plugins allow a way to run backend signal processing uh, triggered from the browser. So the, the backend server running plugins is separate from the rest of the IQ Engine, you know, backend and front end. And you can actually have multiple backend servers connected to one instance of IQ Engine. In fact, a third party could run a backend server, uh, like a company could show off their RF capabilities. It doesn't even have to be open source. And we could connect the main iqengine.org to that server so that anyone can try out the functionality. Uh, now our API uh, interface is defined with an open API spec that sort of represents a way to send IQ samples and parameters and then get various returns like I, more IQ or detection bounding boxes, that kind of thing. Uh, but this means that plugins can be written in any language. 
although the project only has examples and templates for Python and GNU Radio right now. So here's a quick demo of running a plugin. So I'm going to go to this synthetic uh, signal here that has a few different uh, signals within it. I enable time cursors, which lets me choose the portion of the recording I want to send to the plugin. And then the, at the bottom left here, it might be hard to see, represents the plugins interface. Um, I guess I can just show this live. So if, if this uh, refreshes here, yeah, anyway. So right now we only have one uh, plugin server attached. It's kind of like the, the canonical server. Um, but I'm gonna show a detection plugin running. So you can see there, the results are shown as SIGMF annotations or, or these black bounding boxes immediately. So you can immediately see how well like a detector worked. But there's other forms of plugins. So switching over to a recording that includes analog signals, uh, select the portion you want to send to the plugin since it's running at the back end. And then I'm going to run an FM signal detector. It's not hard to detect FM. Uh, we, we know where, the, where it is. And then I'm going to run an FM demodulator on the middle signal. So what gets returned is actually a wave file that the browser then downloads. Although I don't have audio, it's, it's a very small snippet of IQ, so it's like a few milliseconds of, of audio. Um, now, the last type of return from the plugins is, is more IQ samples. So I'm going to run a low pass filter plugin now, where you specify the cutoff and the width and the number of taps. And currently what IQ Engine does is it displays the, the returned IQ samples in this pop-up where we can see the spectrogram, time, frequency, IQ. But in the future, we plan a way for you to say whether or not you want to make the returned IQ samples what you're now viewing in the main tool here. Uh, so that's the gist of the plugins. Writing a Python plugin is extremely simple because we already wrote the server part that deals with the open API interface. Uh, so here's an example of a Python plugin that runs a low pass filter. Now, every plugin gets the sample rate and the center frequency automatically, but you have to specify the custom parameters you want. And we're using a Pydantic's data class decorator to automatically grab a schema of these custom parameters. That way, the front end knows the parameters and the types and everything. So these three are custom to this plugin. And we use NumPy's Furwin and Convolve to actually perform the filtering. Lastly, the return is using this object here. We're currently base64 encoding the return samples, which is a little inefficient, but it gets the job done for now. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you wanted to make a Python, uh, turn Python DSP into a plugin that you could run from the browser, it's extremely simple. And there's gonna be a workshop on Thursday where we're going to do a hands-on tutorial. We'll show how to run, um, a development server locally and how to make your own plugin. Now on the GNU radio side, uh, it's a little hacky that the current way we do things, but it works with existing GNU radio blocks, which was the important part. So we're using ZMQ's pub and sub to get samples from Python land into GNU radio land. Some of you may have guessed that's what we would do. Um, so as a quick example, here's a Python GNU radio flow graph. It's a low pass filter. And it includes a ZMQ sub source for getting samples into GNU radio and then a pub sync for getting them back out. Now, as far as the, the plugin uh, side of code, we create a corresponding pub and sub socket in Python. So we make the pub, we start the flow graph, set up the sub, and then we send the samples to the flow graph. This is a really common uh, scheme. In fact, we have a tutorial, GNU radio has a tutorial doing the same exact thing essentially, where you get the samples back into Python and then we return them to the client just like we did before. So you can imagine that plugins can be chained, right? If a lot of plugins return IQ and take an IQ, then you could certainly chain them together. And that's where this idea of pipelines comes in. So the browser interface that I showed you, it currently lets you evaluate a plugin, tweak the parameters, you know, you can play around with other people's work. 
but you can't create a plugin in the browser. You have to have it already created, whether that's in GRC or in Python. And then you would wrap it into a plugin uh, to allow others to evaluate it. Well, uh, so what we're planning to do, it's not done yet, is to find an existing format for designing pipelines. It's kind of like GRC, where you connect blocks together, except it's a little more like combining flow graphs together. And ideally, we would want um, this design software to be web-based so that you could actually design the pipeline in the browser and then run it. Now, as far as actually executing the pipeline, it would be on a Kubernetes cluster, which would either be set up to listen for more recordings to show up in a storage account or to be provided over the same REST interface I showed earlier. So this pipeline thing is obviously more tailored towards organizations than individuals, but I figured I would mention it. And if anyone, either org or individual, is interested in sort of working with the project to make this happen, definitely uh, let us know. So for you RFML folks out there, I figured I'd point out where IQ Engine fits into the workflow. It might be kind of obvious, but at the beginning of the workflow, if your data set is based on a bunch of SIGMF recordings, you can use IQ Engine to manage those recordings. Look at if you're performing detection, you might have labels using SIGMF annotations. So you could sort of review your data, add annotations. Um, and then the other place it comes in is at the end. Once you've done training, once you have a successful model and you run the model via inference, so that it can be used. You could wrap it into a plugin so that you can share your work with the world if you want to using IQ Engine. So it's a way to share, but in, you know, inversely, it's a way to sort of bring the SDR community together so that it's easier to find other people's work, right? Uh, speaking of communities, so we have a Discord server a uh, big thanks to Jumbotron for monitor, uh, moderating the server and helping configure it. And then if you're not into Discord, you can always use the GitHub system, like making an issue for either a feature request or just an, an idea. Uh, and then here's a quick um, snapshot of our Google Analytics. So we have, we have Google Analytics running on iqengine.org, but it's configured to only grab the minimal information we wanted to make sure there was no way it could get information like, for example, a file name of a local recording that someone was analyzing, right? That, that must be kept private. But we're currently at 8,000 uh, unique visitors over the last few months across, across the globe. Uh, by the way, there's a link to the Discord in the, in the top right if you're on iqengine.org. Uh, the code is organized with a, with a big mono repo. Even the plugins are part of the same repo. Now the front end and back end are, are kind of shipped together in the same Docker image, so we can control versions a little more easily, but the plugins are packaged up separately. And the plugins container includes GNU Radio, as you can imagine. And in the future, we're going to be including other open source software that we can wrap as a plugin. But someone could also sort of fork our, um, our Docker recipe and add their own you know, dependencies if they wanted to wrap something else. Uh, documentation lives as MDX files, and these are a pretty convenient way to do documentation. The actual source code looks like Markdown, but it can be rendered as uh, React components. So that way we can render the documentation in the website itself uh, without it looking ugly in the source code. So our front end uses React, the, the back end is all in Python and fast API. Uh, and then we use Tailwind for CSS. And there's, there's a few more details about the code organization in this diagram. The, the CICD I'll briefly mention. So even though it's a very young project, we spent a lot of time early on trying to get as mature CICD as possible. So we have staging.iqengine.org, which is a deployment that always represents the latest main code which is really nice if you're a contributor and you get your feature merged in, you can immediately see it. And then every few weeks we release a tag, um, we release a major revision uh, to prod. Uh, we got a bunch of uh, unit and integration tests. We're using Playwright for the integration test. It's been working out pretty well. 
um, sort of the, the, you know, the, the GitHub actions that you would expect to see. Now, some upcoming features that I'll, I'll point out a few of these. So right now, you can either open local recordings in the client, or you can view recordings stored in the cloud with, with these under these uh, storage accounts that I showed. But what we want to do is add a way for someone to have like a, a local storage server or a NAS and be able to run the back end and have it uh, serve those recordings. So this would be useful for a, an organization who wants to keep everything private. Uh, the, the next thing that we're planning to wrap into a plugin is sat dump. So if you're interested in satellite signals at all, I would highly recommend this awesome open source software by Aang on GitHub. And he has a whole community on Matrix around it. So he has several different satellite receivers implemented. And the plan is to have each of these receivers show up as a plugin in the IQ engine interface. Uh, longer term, the time frequency and IQ plots are very simple right now. They're really just using Plotly. So sort of beefing them up and adding features there is a big one. Uh, ways you can contribute if you're interested. So uh, there's obviously the code contribution part being involved in the development of the project. But if you're not, you know, if you're not able to do that, you could contribute RF recordings that have been, uh, you know, approved for public release or that you've individually created. Um, or you can contribute plugins, which is really just any open source signal processing. And then I didn't show the SIGGEN tool, but uh, if you have any Python-based transmitter code, in fact, I could show it off real quickly here. We have, this is more education-oriented. The SignalGen tool is um, kind of like a little playground for folks. We have example signals here. There's OFDM, DSS, uh, BPSK. And then the idea is you run this Python all in the browser. Um, and it kind of acts as a starting point for someone getting into signal processing. So we have the time, frequency, spectrogram, plots, and then the code to generate them here. And everything's editable. Once again, we're using the PyoDide project to do this and the code mirror project for the actual editor. So yeah, so I'm hoping that in like a year from now, there'll be several examples of Python transmitters listed here. I think this will be a nice kind of central place to share uh, mainly for education and, and to sort of act as a starting point for research. Uh, now, so we're, we're also looking for universities and, and organizations to engage with to try to figure out if the features we have on the top of our mind, you know, align with what folks want. Because in the end, this is an open source community driven project. It's not under any specific organization. Uh, so if you want to chat, reach out on Discord, or you can email iqengine at vt.edu, or you know, reach out to me. Uh, one last quick thing I wanted to show off if we've got it working here. So I didn't show off querying. We have a basic query system which lets you search over frequency, you know, date, et cetera, what you'd expect. But more recently, uh, Gabriel, who's done a lot of work, added open AI integration. So you can type like, recordings that contain LTE. And you can see here, it really just contained LTE in the description or the title. In fact, you can look at the query parameters, but you can do some other fun stuff like recordings uh, in XBand uh, taken within Central Park on Labor Day of 2020. So this uses the GPT models, which don't go past 2021. Now there are no recordings that fit that, uh, that query, obviously, but we can look at the query parameters that were generated from it. And you can see the frequency range, X band, date time, I, I assume that's Labor Day. And then the GeoJSON um, polygon that I, I would imagine represents Central Park if the GPT models are working. So, you know, if you're a, a big, uh, like a spectrum sensing group or whatnot, you can imagine the value of having that kind of query at your disposal. Uh, and yeah, that's it. So um, if you wanna, you know, support the project, the, the simplest thing you can do is, is star us on GitHub. That's one way. Um, but with that, I'll go ahead and, and take any questions. I think we have a few minutes before Martin's talk. Thanks, Mark. That seems really interesting. 
Any questions from the audience? We're here. Anybody knows where a second microphone is? We can do this fast. So, is this the second one? Uh, so this is super cool. I would have wished I've had this many years ago as learning all this stuff. When you are selecting things, can you select for frequency and time? I don't know if I think your examples were, I was looking at a spectrogram, but it sounded like you were saying time domain samples. Like, could you also just isolate like chunks of the spectrum and send it off? So right now the time cursor is, is kind of used doubly for deciding which samples are sent to the, the plugins. And that's really just deciding which like portion of the recording. So there's no like tune filter decimate, um, but that is part of in the roadmap to have a way to specify a bounding box. It could be an annotation or it could be the selection cursors and then say, hey, I want to download this. Can you do a filter, a tune filter decimate to zoom in in frequency, crop in time and give me the resulting SIGMF recording? That, that's one of the near- That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll make sure that happens. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the other one. More questions? Okay, I don't see any more questions. Uh, thank you to Mark, and by the way, Mark's also the author of uh, PySDR.org, and uh, so that's uh, another Thanks for really the plug. Cool yeah, stuff. if you want to learn more about uh, DSP using Python, check out PySDR.org, free online textbook. <laughs>